your trifecta of easy, fast, and healthy. We are gonna get all of our meat for the month prep today. This is gonna shred my chicken breast for me. For sides tonight, it's a little choose your own adventure. Mm -hmm. Throwing things. We're gonna use this on tacos, on enchiladas, sometimes we make salads out of it. So hopefully I can get these to wrap closed. We are done. And when you come back, we're cooking our 20 minute meal. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Lauren, back with another video and forgive me, I just finished my workout for the night, but I was thinking I need to get dinner started for my family. It's after seven o'clock. Lila ate super early because she just had a very overtired day and needed to go to bed early. So she is in bed now, but Josh just got home and I need to make us dinner. And this happens so often where we've had just a crazy day and it's like a downhill run getting the toddler fed into bed. And then all of a sudden it's late and I realize my husband and I still need to eat. What can I make as fast as possible, but still stay on track with our healthy eating goals? If you're new, hey, I'm Lauren. I am a mom on a journey to lose 150 pounds. So far, I am 75 pounds down using the WW Blue Plan, as well as counting calories for a calorie deficit. Here on my channel, I love sharing healthy recipes that work for your family, meal planning and meal preps, grocery hauls, and motherhood healthy lifestyle. So I thought today I'm gonna grab my camera while I do the dinner run around and film it for you guys. I feel like so many of us struggle with this on a weeknight basis. How do I find that perfect recipe that's the dinner trifecta of easy, fast, and healthy so we can stay on track with our eating but get dinner done and get on with our night? So one of the things my husband and I have started doing in the last few months is bulk prepping our meat for the month. We use our smoker, but this process can be done on your grill by baking your meat, by using your crock pot or your Instapot. You can use any method you want and the principles will still work to cook, prep, and weigh out and portion your meat to be stored, cooked in the freezer. Having that ready to go in my freezer, portioned out for single meals, they thaw super fast and really help me to get creative and make up some new fun recipes without spending hours in the kitchen every weekday night. I pulled this one pound package of cooked shredded chicken out of my freezer an hour ago, just before I started my workout. Now it is kind of to that perfect, it's still cold. I just thought it in the sink because it was like frozen, frozen. Um, I would say you could easily pull this out in the morning, pop it in your refrigerator and let it defrost throughout the day and then it'll be ready to go. Um, this is perfectly still cold. It didn't reach like danger zone temp, so just be mindful of that. But I had this sitting out, it has thawed within the hour it took for me to work out and is now ready to go for me to pop it into a healthy recipe. And guys, tonight I am cooking dinner in under 20 minutes. I'm gonna share with you guys the whole process, how Josh and I prep our meat in bulk for the month and then come right back here and you and I are gonna cook a 20 minute dinner meal that's easy, fast, and healthy, will keep us on track and help us avoid the panic buying of takeout when we're just too tired to cook for that night. Because honestly, using one of my prepped packages of protein, it's gonna take less time and I'm gonna make a healthier meal then going to run out, pick up takeout, coming home, this is gonna be faster, I promise. And it's gonna be healthier and it's gonna be easy and you're gonna save money because you're not spending it on takeout. So go check it out. And when you come back, we're cooking our 20 minute meal. Good morning guys. We are gonna get all of our meat for the month prepped today. And we do this not every month, but every few months. It's nice just to have stuff ready to go, especially if we know we're gonna be having a really busy time. It's so easy to use cooked, shredded, frozen meat that thaws super fast for cooking um, on a weeknight basis. So we are prepping the meat this morning. Josh has been outside since pretty early this morning. He's getting our smoker ready to go. Good morning. Good morning. So we have a charbroil smoker. Yep. We got it from Amazon from your dad. Your dad gave it to yeah, us. Yeah, my dad gave it to me. It's a small um, backyard offset smoker. So what that means is that um, your charcoal and your wood go in this small little firebox here. Um, and then whatever meat you're cooking goes in the cook chamber here uh, and the heat and the smoke come up and through and over the meat and then out the stack. So we go low and slow and put low some and good slow. flavor in it, right? Yeah. But we're not cooking the meat all the way through on the smoker. 
No, yeah, because really you only get um, smoke flavor in your food in the first four hours of the cook. And then after that, as one of the barbecue guys I like to follow says, BTUs are BTUs, and it doesn't matter where you get them, whether they're in the oven or on the smoker, so. I don't know what a BTU is. Oh, uh, it's a measurement of heat. I don't know guys, Josh handles the cook on the meat. I take on the prepping because I'm neurotic about my kitchen being clean, so. I've gone ahead and we're starting with the chicken this morning. We also have some pork butts to do, but I have three chickens here. And basically I started with a clean sink area. And this is one of the like produce bags that we put the chickens in. So we didn't get any drippings in the sink because you don't want the juices to run all over your counter. I opened each of the whole chickens. I rinsed them with some cold water really quick, and then I used paper towel to blot them dry as possible. I laid them out. These are those trays I picked up at Costco. I showed them in my Costco haul. It was so cool. They came as a two set, so there's a red one and a black one, and it helps with cross-contamination when you're doing grilling of raw meat. So we're putting all of our raw meat on the red tray. I'm gonna season this really simple. Just some salt and pepper, because we use this meat all month long. Over the course of multiple recipes, we aren't necessarily doing barbecue flavored chicken. We're going to put the chicken on the smoker for one hour, so it has just a slight smoky grill kind of flavor to it. And then we're gonna finish it in the oven for about an hour. Each of these weighs approximately five pounds. We tried to go as close as possible to having the same amount of poundage for each bird and that will just help with a more even cook. So really simple, just salt and pepper to keep the flavor really neutral so I can use it in a bunch of different recipes over the course of the month. And then once the chicken's done, we let them cool for a little while. I remove all of the skin, bones, cartilage. I do try and separate pulling off the breast from the rest of the dark meat, and then I shred them and package them by poundage. So I will show you guys that whole process of how I sort all of our chicken and get that in the freezer for the month. And then um, after, so once the chicken is on, probably in about a half hour, I will start prepping the pork because that will go on as soon as the chicken comes off. But that's why we do these marathon smoking grilling sessions because the smoker's already hot. We don't need to use as much wood and charcoal, bringing it back up to temperature. And we kind of just have a fun family barbecue out in the back all day. Our chickies are seasoned. Okay, the chickens are on. We have them all lined up in a row. We did put them down, um, their backside down, all of them, breast side up. This will help render out some of that skin and fat. Josh has the heat probe in and it like is super cool and it connects, oh here, it's an iGrill 3. I don't know what that means. It's one of his grill toys, but it will help read the internal temperature as we let them cook. All right, so these guys are going on for about an hour usually, and then we'll move them to the oven and we'll start up the pork. Okay guys, now we have the oven set at 275 and all three, oops, foggy. All three chickens fit in my roasting pan nicely and we're gonna go on that for at least a half hour and then we'll check all of the temperatures and see how much longer we need to go. And it is time. I have our red raw meat tray all cleaned and dried. These are the two half pork butt roasts that we're gonna be doing today. They were just around five pounds each, a little over, one's a little under. So as close as we could get based on what Aldi had in stock. So again, I'm gonna open these in the sink so none of the juices drain on my counter or floors. I'm going to then pat them dry, transfer them to our red raw meat tray. We just put some regular old yellow mustard on the half pork butts. We are not barbecue experts, guys. This I'm is learning. Not, this is not that channel. We are hobby barbecuers. Anyway, this is just for fun, but you know what? It also is a great way to affordably feed my family for the month. We get all of the cooking done in one day. All of the mess is done in one day, which makes me happy and it makes my life easier overall. So. Anyway, okay, we're gonna score the fat and then we are using this Rufus Teague fixed up this rub, meat rub, herbs and spices. This is a pretty neutral meat rub. It's not gonna be too barbecue-y. Again, we're gonna use this on tacos, on enchiladas. Sometimes we make salads out of it or burrito bowls, pork sandwiches. <laughs> we will use it as barbecue, but not everything will be barbecue. So we try to keep it a little bit more neutral in flavor when we cook it. Okay guys, it is just around 10 o'clock. 
I'm finally sitting down to have a cup of coffee. I'm gonna work on some editing. Josh is outside tending the barbecue. And what's really nice is when we do this on the weekends, if the weather is nice, Lila's out there playing and she'll end up playing outside like all day. I've already cleaned the kitchen like three times. The chicken is almost done in the oven and then we just have to let it cool and there'll be time to shred it. And then the pork takes a long time though. The pork takes about eight hours total cook time. So that's, and that's for, the size you have to go by poundage um so for us it'll take about eight hours because they were each about five pounds that's 10 pounds of pork and um we we're just going to check the internal temperature too as we go but on average usually that's about the same size we get and how long we end up needing to cook it we're gonna do four hours on the smoker um for that flavor and then we're going to transfer it to the oven to cook nice low and slow um for the last four hours just to make sure all that fat is rendered and it's cooked all the way through then we have to let that cool and then we'll shred it. So 10 o'clock, eight hours. Mm. I'm hoping I can get everything done and cleaned by eight o'clock tonight. All right, guys, the birds are out of the oven and they look real yummy. Here is my little setup. I'm about to start shredding and pulling the chicken. It's still warm, but it is not too hot to handle. I'm gonna get another bowl out and it'll be my discard bowl for the skin and the bones and cartilage. I'm going to shred down the chicken. I'm going to separate the breasts to the side and those I'll leave on the tray maybe and shred the rest down and put the shredded chicken in here. Once I get them all deboned and taken care of, then I'll shred the chicken breasts and put them to the side just to keep them separate. I only do this because I follow the WW Blue Plan as well as calorie counting for a calorie deficit. And I like to track chicken breast and dark meat chicken separately because they're a different calorie point and a different WW Blue Plan points value each. So that's another reason why I'm doing that. And then I still eat the dark meat. I don't not eat it. You can eat anything you want on those plans. You just count for it. So I will still use it. I'll just pick certain recipes I'll use dark meat in versus other recipes I will use the white meat in and be able to track it that way. And then I will start portioning them. I have gallon freezer Ziplocs as well as these um, quart storage bags. And I will do some of both sizes. So I will put a portion into the bag, use my food scale. I will weigh this out by pounds and ounces and just keep filling the bags until they're around in one pound or two pound portions. Never up, never down, never. Like a theme in a song, clever. Feeling high, feeling low. So right, then I'm wrong, hoping I'll be fine But I get up, I always do I never think, I always do Never thought I wouldn't jump, oh what a fool But if I fall This is real love after five years <laughs> Thank you I'm wrong Praise to Josh, he did such a great job on the chicken this time the quarters, like the thigh and leg portions, just perfectly tore away. So we're actually gonna probably say these, I'll remove the skin, but what I'll do is tonight for dinner, we are planning obviously to have some of our fresh barbecue. I think we're gonna have um, the thigh and leg portions and we'll use them with some sugar-free barbecue sauce. These are the breast portions. So I haven't touched them, I left them intact. I showed you guys this the last time I got a rotisserie chicken but just again, in case you haven't seen that video, these are so easy, they're so juicy, fresh, they still are a bit warm. They will tear away from the bones so easily. But if you run your finger down the breastbone and get under there, you're gonna end up tearing off almost a perfect chicken breast. There we go. I'm just gonna remove some of these fatty bits, trim it down a bit. And now it's up to you. You can leave some of these whole if you wanted to use them for just having chicken with some veggies and a sauce on the side, or um, some of them I will go ahead and shred down to use as shredded chicken and recipes throughout the month. So I have my shredded dark meat. 
I saved two whole chicken breasts as well as these two chicken quarters, the thigh and leg bone, and we'll use those for dinner. So those are all going in the fridge. This I will measure out and freeze. And then I've shared this trick once before on my channel, but I took the other four chicken breasts and any chicken breast pieces that like pulled away and tossed them in my KitchenAid mixer using the paddle attachment. I am going to start this on just a low, like a one or a two, and slowly, this is gonna shred my chicken breast for me. You wanna make sure there's no bones or cartilage or skin or fat pieces left. I trimmed it really well, and it works best on slightly warm meat. So this is a hack. All of these recipes, all of these ideas of the shredded chicken, you guys don't have to have a smoker. You can use whatever method for cooking the chicken or just chicken breasts you want and have this tip for shredding, and you still will end up with a bulk amount of shredded chicken that you can weigh out and portion and use for your month of recipes. Shredded chicken breast, perfectly shredded for any recipe, and I shredded it all without my hands or getting a big mess in less than three minutes. Okay, I'm turning this to pounds and ounces. I'm going to grab a quart size Ziploc. I think this will be big enough. And I'm going to be prepping all of my shredded chicken into bags for the freezer. Got two pounds exactly out of the dark meat. I put that just in one freezer Ziploc. This will be great to use for soups or doing some sort of a crock pot dish or maybe a um, chicken based meat sauce with spaghetti or pasta. So we are wrapping the two pork butts in foil. They're gonna go back on the pan and finish in the oven. For how long, babe? Uh, it's about temperature. So it'll probably be two to three more hours once they hit internal temperature of 190. Then they're good? Then they're good to go. What are they at now when you took them off? 160. Is when you pulled them off? Yeah. Okay. So 30 more degrees to go in the oven at about 300. Make sure you put them in some sort of a pan with an edge just in case there's, most of the fat has rendered down at this point, but just in case there's any drippage. Bada boom. Our pork is out of the oven. And now we're just gonna go through, remove any of the larger fatty bits, remove some of this bark. It makes a really good smoke ring, but you wanna remove a lot of the very outside that's charred. Otherwise you'll have too much char flavor in your shredded pork. So Josh is just gonna go in with his hands as well as we have these like meat claws that you can use to pull it apart, separate it out and pop all of the lean shredded pork in this bin. Here is all the shredded pork. Guys, look at this beautiful smoke ring that we got today. So I'm gonna do the same thing with my scale and my bags and measure some out. I'm gonna set one pound of shredded pork aside for this week for meals. And then the rest of it, I'm gonna put into one or two pound packages for the freezer. We are done. I have all of the meat shredded and prepped and packaged and labeled. This is something else I like to do when we do a big freezer haul. I always wanna know when I cooked it and prepped it as well as how much is in the bag. So, and what it is exactly, because once it's frozen, it's hard to tell sometimes. All in all that we ended up with about six pounds of chicken after cooking. And if you remember, we started with three, roughly five pound chickens. We got a little bit more than a third of the weight out in meat, which is really good for chicken because you have to think about a five pound chicken, all the bone, cartilage, fat, and skin that you end up getting rid of. So that's a pretty good um, outcome for having cooked chicken. And then the pork, you always wish you end up with more pork for how much you cooked, but pork cooks down a lot. We started with two roughly five pound half pork butts and we got one, two pounds, three and a half pounds of shredded pork meat out of it. So about a third again. A third is a good rough judgment of how much actual meat you will get out of your pork and chicken once you put it on the smoker and pull everything apart from the bigger cuts. Oh, Lila's helping. See guys, I told you, it all fits so flat 
no worries about fitting it in my freezer. I don't even have a deep freezer, but meal prepping works. It's not too much. It folds so flat down. I even have stuff from Costco in here, all the things, and I have a standard size fridge. Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, so for our 20 minute meal tonight, we are doing a twist on one of my husband's favorite takeout meals, buffalo chicken wraps from Buffalo Wild Wings. For our buffalo chicken wraps, we're gonna be using our one pound package of defrosted shredded chicken. I'm mixing together some third less fat Philadelphia cream cheese along with Frank's red hot sauce, mixing the chicken into that to make kind of like a buffalo chicken dip or spread. We're gonna be using those on top of carb balance mission tortillas, topping it with some classic ranch, throwing in some veg and sprinkling of course, some mozzarella cheese. So we'll have the wraps and then for the side, we're just gonna do some raw fruit and veggie with dip and bada boom, dinner's gonna be done. And if you guys didn't know, I'm a little competitive, so yes, we are going to be setting a timer, truly a 20 minute meal. Let our time begin. Okay guys, the timer is running, let's get cooking. First off, I'm starting off with our shredded chicken. That's going in a bowl. To it, I'm gonna be adding some Frank's Red Hot Sauce. You can add this to your taste. It comes in at zero points on the WW Blue Plan, and I believe for a teaspoon, it's also zero calories. So, flavor it up. Then to that, I'm gonna go ahead and add in a third of a brick of third less fat cream cheese. And then I'm just taking the back of a wooden spoon and I'm gonna mash it all together. That's looking really good and it's also tasting really good. I took a little taste test and because we did the chickens on the smoker, Oh, that smoky flavor goes so well with the Frank sauce. It's like fresh barbecue, even though it came from the freezer. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and spread some of the buffalo chicken mixture into our low carb tortillas. Each of these tortillas runs two points on the WW Blue Plan. So we're gonna divide the mixture into four servings because I'm gonna make two wraps for each, Josh and I. Okay guys, I got about a half cup of that chicken buffalo mixture onto each one of the tortillas. It was gonna make way more than four, so I went ahead and made up six because I like to follow the rule of make one for now, one for later. If you are already putting in the time and effort to cooking, save yourself the meal prep time and just double your batch and put the leftovers in the fridge. Then we have either an extra lunch or a dinner for tomorrow or another day this week. So I went ahead and did that. I have six of them. Josh and I will probably eat two each for dinner. And now I'm just gonna slice up some onion and dice some avocado along with a tablespoon of this part skim mozzarella shredded cheese. Roll them up and then I'm going throwing things. So I'm gonna get all of that together and in the air fryer for about five to eight minutes each. But we gotta go fast, I'm running out of time. slices on each wrap. Ooh, I have an avocado already cut in the fridge. Saves me time. Aha! Which is great because actually I'm probably going to use both of these since I have six wraps. I will do a half of an half, so a quarter of an avocado on each one. Can I get bonus minutes for changing the camera angle, guys? dressing. This is the Bullhouse Farms Ranch and I truly, truly love this dressing. It tastes 
like good old regular ranch, but it does have a lower point value, which is so nice. So I'm just doing one tablespoon on each wrap. I will say the Mission Carb Balance Tortillas, they come in at two points each, and I find them to be a little bit smaller, but more points than the La Banderita Carb Counter Wraps. Those are my other favorite. I find they're a little bit bigger, and those ones actually come in at just one point each on the WW Blue Plan. So hopefully I can get these two wraps closed. Oh, we're getting a little messy today. It's okay, they'll taste delicious. I may have overfilled these. Well guys, I like to call this um, adjusting in the moment. So we're having buffalo chicken tacos now. I can't get them folded. You know, I normally use the La Banderita shells and they're a little bit bigger and I've been able to wrap them before. So we're adjusting and we're gonna have some delicious buffalo chicken tacos instead. Um, you could still put these if you wanted to in the oven to warm them through a little bit, but we're okay with them being like room temp at this time. So let's share some sides with you guys real quick. For sides tonight, it's a little choose your own adventure. This is why I love prepping my fruit and veggies into bins because on busy nights, I love just pulling the bins out and some dip and saying, go to it fam, dinner done. Okay guys, let's check how we did on time. I know I shaved off a few minutes because I did not have to put these in the air fryer. However, I was also changing camera angles a bunch for filming purposes, which makes it really difficult to truly stick to a 20 minute timer dinner prep. So, oh, there you go with two minutes to spare. All right, guys, there you go. There is our easy, fast, and healthy 20 minute dinner. And it really is thanks to having prepped my meat in bulk for the month. Now that amount of meat should last us about six weeks. We are midway through June now and we prepped it over Memorial Day weekend and we're still cruising with lots to go in our freezer. We don't necessarily use the frozen meat every single night. I often will cook with fresh stuff too, but on those nights where you want something fast and easy, it is so nice to have this on hand as an option instead of running out for takeout, spending the extra money and the extra points and calories that you don't need to when you can cook at home. So thank you guys so much for joining me today on our bulk meat cooking marathon, as well as cooking our 20 minute meal. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed today's video. If you wanna see 20 minutes are up. <laughs> Please hit that like button if you enjoyed today's video and if you want to see more easy meal preps for healthy eating and until next time I always do I never think I always do never thought I